<laughs> but uh, in your experience, what are some things that you've seen men and women need to have in place before getting married to make sure their relationship, you know, has the best chance for success? That's a very good question. You can take that one. Well, um, I, you know, coming from a therapeutic lens, like, uh, um, I think it's really important for um, young adults to kind of understand their upbringing and understand their family dynamics and understand like um, what was role modeled to them mm -hmm. and, you know, whether they had a healthy model of what a, a, a healthy marriage looks like or whether it was a, a dif dysfunctional model. Mm -hmm. um, because if it was a dysfunctional model, then they're gonna have to learn more about, well, what is, what's a healthy marriage? What, what even is that? Um, because if we didn't have that model for us when we were young, we don't understand what it is. And so then we end up repeating the same dynamics that were modeled for us, yeah. you know, when we were young. So, um, you know, when people come, come to us for premarital counseling, I just really want to kind of work on, tell me, tell me your story and tell me about your childhood and, and then you tell me yours. And, and then I kind of help them see like together, do you see like this, this particular thing might be an issue that, you know, so I help them see how each of their own individual issues might play out in a marriage mm. and could cause problems. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah. I mean, cause like it, it, we don't think about those things sometimes, even just how we're going to raise our children. Right. You know, you believe in spanking. Right. I don't believe in spanking. That becomes an issue. You know, now, yeah. I mean, we might go get divorced because I don't want you to spank my child. And I'm like, uh, no, he needs a spanking. You know, so we grew uh -huh. up in different households like that. And yeah, I mean, you're absolutely right. Just I mean, and unfortunately, many of us don't have a model. And yeah. so we have to learn it from somewhere. And, and, and God forbid we learn it from TV and movies and music. But, right. but we subconsciously exactly. do get influenced exactly. by those things. Oh, absolutely. Yes, for sure. I mean, you make a very important point. Um, and I think, you know, people entering into the prospect of marriage, you've got to know the truth between what is the world's version of love and what is God's love as defined in the Bible. Mm. Two entirely different things. Yes. And so many of us and of married couples, the inevitably the the marriage is going to run aground because you're practicing a form of love that's not God's love. Mm. And th that worldly version of love is will wreck a marriage. There's, there's so much um, dependency and expects, expectancy of each other in that type of, uh, in that version, what I'll call that version of love. Mm -hmm. It's not God's version as defined in the Bible. Yeah. And very I find that's the big. Uh, yes. Yeah, very conditional. Very yeah. Thank yeah. You. yeah. Very conditional. Yeah. And, I and find that's fun. the biggest lacking. Say that one more time. I'm sorry. That is the biggest lacking, um, for, um, couples who reach crisis, but not just couples that reach crisis, but young people entering into marriage. Um, you need to know what it really is. Yeah. Not, not the fantasy version that, like you said, we're fed <laughs> by TV or, right. or the songs on the radio or whatever right. it might be. You know, I've always found it weird that people could go into marriage with the idea that if it doesn't work, I've got options. It's like, if you're going yeah. into it with that thought process, it's not going to work, yeah. you know, um, yeah. you know, and, and I, I, I was telling my wife, I honestly believe like getting married, you start, like you said, you learn love from a different perspective. You learn it from, especially if you're both believers. Now you learn God's love because it's a challenge being married. Right. But I think having mm -hmm. children amplifies the love like by 100 percent, like you love your wife, yeah. you love your husband, but that baby, it's like your love, like the meter just lifts a little bit more like, wow, I didn't know I was capable of that kind of love, you know, and just learning how to, I think you said it perfectly, learning how to love. That's just, that's a good way to look at it. I just want to learn how to love. I want to learn how to love how God loves. And I think God uses our relationships to expose to us 
his deep love mm. because I guarantee we frustrate him like our spouse frustrates us, you know? You know? Yes, for sure. For sure. <laughs> yeah, right. one... Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was just going to make the point that to, to, to sort of button that is one uh, very smart psychologist. Uh, he, he described marriage as a people growing machine. Mm. And, and that makes perfect sense. If you think if God designed it and it's for God's purpose, it's ultimately to grow us by mm. way of relationship. Mm. Did you know that you could actually support the YouTube channel and podcast? That's right. If you have a desire to be a blessing to the show, there's many different ways you can do it. We have Venmo, PayPal, Cash App, and you can use the website to make a donation. Any donation will help and every donation will be used to pour into the lives of others. So if you want to click on the description of this video, you can find all of the information you need to make a donation. God bless you. And and thank you for your support.